When the money is scrambled to the very last cent, riots and hatred soon will commence. When all the world's commerce will be put in a bind from the evils that lurk where the sun never shines. It is I, Dr. Otto von Schnick, ick, ick, who has played on you this trick, ick, ick, ick. <laughs> Hello, B-Movie Maniacs! Welcome to Season 2, and we're kicking it off with Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Beam on B-Movie Mania! Let's go! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bizarre, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania! And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to B Movie Mania Season Two. Is everyone here? We might need to do a roll call. Uh, let's see who we got. Do we have Mr. Crazy Chris Hudson? I'm sick, but you're here, I'm and that's here. all I'm that here. matters. That's yeah. all that matters. Now, Thank what you. about a Mr. Jason Hulls? Jeez, that was a real downer, Chris. Come on, way to start <laughs> off the side. I'm all sick. Right. How about this? I've People got don't want that. These. They want enthusiasm. Hey, everyone, I'm sick. All right, that's oh, better. Okay, anyway. And yes, I'm here, Mike. Yeah, that's, that is a bit Chase better. here, too. Yeah. Uh, and how about uh, Mr. Paul S. Brooks? That's right, Mike. I'm back, and I'm crappier than ever. Oh, yeah, baby. And I'm drinking a Bud Light Platinum, oh. which does not sponsor this show. <laughs> oh, not yet, at least. Oh, dear and Lord. Not ever. <laughs> I'm drinking a rum and whatever the Aldi version of Diet Coke is. Hey, Chris, what are you drinking when you're sick? Oh, I'm drinking a lot of water. I've decided to cut down on my mm. booze. So you're going to have sober, crazy Chris Hudson. <laughs> crazy, sober Chris Hudson? Oh. I think I speak for everyone when I say, boo! Boo that man! Yeah, I know, I know. Hey, I'm getting up there, guys. I can't, oh. uh, I'm going to pee myself if I keep it up like that. Yeah, your yeah. beard is very gray. All right, anyway, <laughs> no one gives a shit about us. Let's talk about what movie we watched. I thought, sorry, one second. I thought Jay usually goes first for, for, for these things. What happened? I won. Did, Paul, did you not you listen to what? The, the competition? Yeah, remember, we switched it up. We had a competition and, and I won. Paul doesn't actually listen to the podcast. Paul, did you not listen to the off-season content? No, I, I, yeah, I do the episode and then I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, you do. Like, do you edit blindly? I believe you edited that episode. <laughs> I haven't told anybody this, but I farm all of it out. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's why you're charging us so much. Yeah. Well, why don't, that's a good point. What's what's the order this season? It's it's me, your favorite be moving maniac, going first, which makes sense. And then it's me. Yeah, Jay. I don't know who's next. Yeah, Jay. Jay, uh, my favorite be moving maniac, goes second. Thank you. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, hey, I'm th I'm third. My favorite B-movie maniac, Crazy Me, is third. Okay. And then my favorite B-movie maniac, uh, Paul Brooks, is fourth. Okay. We really, really mixed it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so so I won the contest, which, which means I got to pick the movie, and uh, I picked a movie I would have loved as a kid, maybe? I don't know. I picked... Dr. Otto and the riddle of his of the gloom beam. It's a magnetic gloom beam. My most destructive invention. When they activate the device, a magnetic ray will be created. Which is yes. which is an earnest movie. Well, it's not really an earnest movie, it's a Jim Varney movie. <laughs> yeah, and now okay, you I think when you pitched this movie to us, Mike, you said it was pre-earnest. But it I, is. I don't know if it is no, pre-Ernest. Like, I think the character it's, Ernest I can had clear this up right now if you want me to. You yeah. guys probably did your research, too. But it's the first movie in which Ernest, the character of Ernest, makes an appearance. Yeah. But he had been doing um, commercials and things like that since the early 80s. Yeah, but those aren't... Are those mini-movies? Is that what we're calling those? Mini-movies? Because otherwise, it's the first fucking movie. Okay. Yeah, not, that's Not accurate. to get angry and aggressive, yes. but fuck. 
I don't know. If, I don't think that's what Jay said. <laughs> Jay said first appearance, didn't you, Jay? Oh, I didn't say first appearance. Maybe, yeah. maybe I worded it as first appearance of Ernest. And I'm sorry. I meant in a movie. You know, I'm you know sorry. What, you know what really got me about this movie is that uh, all these Ernest movies are directed by the same guy. Yeah. And written and the by the same guy. All the commerc- yeah, and all the commercials Ernest was, writ- was in. Yeah. Also by the same guy. He invented the character Ernest. Was it John Cherry or something? John Cherry the Third. Yeah. Yeah. He invented what? Ernest. A treasure. Jim Varney just yes. acted as him. Please get to the quick takes. Quick takes! All right, let's get into some quick takes. And since, since Hudson, since your balls are just Jones in the do this, give me your quick take. All right, I got it right here. <coughs> God damn it, this flu. Oh, my quick take. Um... I think that about says it all. Dear Christ. <laughs> Dear Christ. Wait, I'm sorry. We, the podcast is over. The podcast is over. Wait, I didn't hear any of that. Was that on purpose? No, he didn't say anything. Okay. All right. <laughs> Chris is going to become very minimalistic on this show. <laughs> I am. Well, I'm trying to save my voice for the real, for the rest of the episode. All right. Fine. Paul, please. What's your quick take? You know, Mike, this movie really brought me back to my childhood. Even though I don't think children should necessarily be watching this movie. <laughs> well, there was that upskirt shot. So yeah. That was... <laughs> All right, and Mr. Hulls, Jason Hulls, what do you got? Um, yeah, it also really brought me back to my childhood. I, I thought I had maybe seen this movie because I'd recognized the characters, but then I talked to Paul and he reminded me of the show, and that's probably where I saw him. Anyway, one of the best movies we've reviewed on this show. Wow. Yeah, most I mean, fun. And Mike, I thank you for choosing this because this was a absolute blast. <laughs> Ooh, this is this is going to be a fun little review. I wonder if we're all on that good side. My quick personal quick take is uh, something along the lines of like a. <laughs> Um, so have you been have you been working on your impression? Because last time it was terrible. Yeah, was it? I don't know. I might be I might be sober now, and maybe wasn't then. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> where do you begin with this movie? That uh, my, Mike, I have a question that could lead into your little plot synopsis, if you'd like. Sure. Okay. So, isn't Doctor Otto pulling the same basic plot as Tyler Durden and Fight Club? Like, isn't Fight Club kind of a ripoff of this movie? I mean, I'd say there's a lot of movies that are a ripoff of this movie. I think this tread a lot of new ground and stuff. Jay, what's your logic there? Yeah, you might explain. Well, it's the collapse of the financial market. He, like, Dr. Otto wants to nuke all of the financial records in the world and, and send everything spiraling into chaos. That's exactly what Tyler Durden's trying to do. Oh, yeah. See, I, I thought you were going with the alter ego slant. That's what on I that thought. The multiple personalities. Okay, yeah, it, yeah, but but all the all those alter egos actually exist at the end. I guess how they. That's true and weird, survive. but yes, there's yeah. also the alter ego bit. So, yeah. Chuck definitely saw this movie when before he. Wrote <laughs> this Club. is his favorite movie. Maybe maybe we can get a <laughs> we can get a, a quote from him. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> Mike, I feel uh, I feel that before we get too deep into it. Perhaps we should paint sort of a visual portrait oh, yes. uh, for our listeners of what Dr. Otto uh, looks like in case maybe, you know, people aren't familiar with him. Oh, that'd be that'd be <laughs> great. I, why don't we go around and just just name one thing that we we recognized about Dr. Otto? I will start by saying uh, Dr. Otto's full name is Dr. Otto von Schnick Ick Ick. Which uh, is a whole thing. I think there, honestly, I think there might even be one more ick in there. And sometimes there is in the in the po- in the poem, I believe, or the riddle. There is that ick ick. There's like three. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. They, well, it's, it, it's depends, a, it depends if he's being formal or kind of a little uh, less formal. More of a familiar. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Hudson, what what do you like about Otto? What's one thing you liked about him? Oh, I like the fact that he is a genius. You know, oh, he's a mad yeah. genius, but he is a genius. Yeah, he. He he was a mad scientist basically, yeah. so you can get that vibe. He, he's he's got a layer. He's got a, a mad scientist layer. Oh, and, w- and what a layer! That layer is like if Pee Wee's Playhouse turned evil. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. Uh, Holes, what do you like about the boy? Hit us with oh. the elephant in the room, Jay. Oh yeah, I will. I love the, probably the most obvious and yet very unique thing about the character. He has a living hand. Growing out of the top of his head, <laughs> like like not up in the air, like it's not giving you a high five. 
Like, oh it's, yeah, no, it's just stroking his scalp. Yeah, and it, like, and fit, I tell you, move. when I saw Doctor Otto and I, like the memories came back to me, one of the first things I thought of was like, there needs to be way more Doctor Otto cosplayers out there. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh. know if you guys noticed this. But the guy who played the hand got second billing. Yeah, that I was, yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Hey, I also want to say, amazing. in case any of our listeners think that he's a mad scientist, he maybe it was, the hand was an experiment gone wrong. No, he was born with that hand on his head. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. <laughs> let's let's just jump to that. Let's go chronological hey, in this I film. Wanna, I want to name my thing. Ah, oh, Paul, fine. <laughs> Pussy Willows. I <laughs> know they were Pussy Willows. <laughs> Wait, what? I, I, I was doing that. my research and I couldn't believe it. Oh, what? Uh, I just, missed that. What, what are we talking about? He's wearing Pussy Willows. Yeah, the branches, the branches that come out of his shoulders with the little white balls on them. That's oh a plant God. called a Pussy Willow. <laughs> I would love to know how this character came about. Like, I want Ernest or Jim Varney or whoever. I just, I would love to just know. Like, they're like, yeah, he's gonna have pussy willows growing out of him, and he's gonna have a hand, and he's gonna talk like, like, how did that character come about? It's so unique. Yeah. No, it's wild. John Cherry's alive. Maybe we we hunt him down. Oh, we yes. definitely should yeah. try. Uh Okay, well, why don't we do this, try to do this chronologically? There's a couple flashbacks, but Hudson, you already pointed out the fact that he was born with the hand on his head. Uh, <laughs> can, you, can you describe the birth scene of Dr. Oh, Otto? my God. Well, no. <laughs> You can't you can't describe just his birth scene because it's it's paired side by side with the birth scene of the hero of the movie. What's the guy's name? Lance something or other? Uh, Lance, Lance Sterling. Lance Sterling. Yeah, Lance Sterling. Just the most clueless, most red blooded, oh. goody goody two shoes American, completely oblivious to everything going on. Lance had the most idyllic birth scene you could imagine. Beautiful hospital room, loving parents, just <laughs> just the best doctors and nurses around. Mm -hmm. Then then Dr. Otto's birth scene, he was born in the hospital's basement. <laughs> <laughs> the dingy, nasty, just the worst basement you could I mean, I probably serial killer owned that basement before it became a hospital. But but Chris, terrible. surely he surely at the very beginning of his life, he at least looked like some sort of nice baby, right? At least things started well, right. Well, if you think Jim, Var a full-grown Jim Varney's face on like a baby's body, and is just a beautiful baby, you'd be right, Paul. Oh, it was great. The, the, it was the, the, there's a there's a line in this. There's two lines of amazing dialogue in this scene where the hero of the film, uh, Sterling. As a baby, a newborn child speaks to his parents in well-spoken oh, well, right. well oh, yes. grammar. Hello, mother. Hello, father. I'm so glad you're my parents. Oh, he's got your manners. Then when when the, the earnest, well, not earnest baby, fucking Dr. Otto baby is being delivered, the, the nurse is dragging a sack oh, behind her in the, into the garbage pit. <laughs> And and she goes, Madame von Schnick, I have terrible news for you. It lived! <laughs> and then the mom screams in horror. And then you just see fucking Jim Varney's face just... <laughs> That's something that Jim Varney would go on to do uh, in his TV show. Oh, yeah, that's it's, right. It's Ernest. That's right. There was a baby character that was uh, reoccurring <laughs> that was one of my favorite parts of the show. Oh, God. Oh. Wait, have to re hey, Mike, revisit some I, of that. Yeah. Can I do the 10 years later part? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, please do. So the next time we see him in chronological order... <laughs> is 10 years later. Now... Jim Varney and the guy playing Lance, they're, they're full-grown adults playing 10-year-olds. Oh, yeah. And it's Christmas, <laughs> and Dr. Otto is peeking through the Lance's window, and Lance gets an encyclopedia set that he's really excited <laughs> about. Lance gets his parents a perfect replica of the White House that he made. He says he made out of toothpicks. And, <laughs> and Otto pukes. When I go up, I'm going to be a senator and make the world a better place for everyone. It's enough to make you blow your beats in the snow. Oh, and then they say the Pledge of Allegiance for Christmas. Yeah. And they're all excited. Father, 
Father, can we say it just once since it's Christmas? And then they say the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes. And the dad's like, yes, because it's Christmas. <laughs> you don't get to and say it otherwise. Meanwhile, okay, so Otto's parents are at this terrible dump and they're hoping that he like runs away and he's looking through the window of their house and he gets his parents a gift, right? And they're contemplating yeah. selling it, first of all, before they even yeah. open it. And then... <laughs> <laughs> they go to open it and it's a bomb <laughs> and the entire the entire shack blows up as Otto runs oh. away this is the best treatment ever he just God. straight up murders his parents <laughs> it's like a gigantic explosion it's amazing the whole house blows up yeah, it's yeah just, the, whole the whole house thing is, gone. is done I love it. The mom oh. goes, he got us a present. And the dad responds with, what a surprise. The only thing I got from him before was nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so in so case, good. In case you guys can't tell by our reaction, I mean, right out of the gate, the movie is just ridiculously over the top and oh, yeah. really, really funny. But uh, So, Paul, there's <laughs> one more flashback. This is perfect. Uh, do you want to hit up that flashback for us oh, to get man, it, bring us the, up to present it's day? It's my favorite one. It's the best one. Uh, this is this is where we see the creation of Slave Willie yeah. Yeah. for the first time, <laughs> which is a robot uh, who tends to uh, not be too happy about some of the other science projects involved. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, and and don't forget here, Lance made a voting booth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're surrounded by science experiments like pork through the ages, how yeah. dogs bark, wheels big and small, rocks I have known. <laughs> the weird thing is you see like parents there and everyone's really proud of all these science projects. They're yeah. like, oh, good job. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, shit. My favorite one was just the title of it was just called Furnace Filters. <laughs> I didn't see that. I saw that. Oh. Stupid. Yeah, it's so so good. Lance makes a voting booth that he calls our most sacred right, and that's his science experiment, apparently. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Dr. Dr. Otto's science, uh, science project was the best, though. The yeah, the voice activated oh, robot. Hands down. <laughs> I love the robot. <laughs> Hello, I'm your new D9 voice activated robot. I can walk and talk like a real person. I can perform a complex function. Sayonara, book through the ages. Oh, the, the robot's, robot's the best. great. The robot, <laughs> the robot is the creation of emojis, right? It is. Yeah, it oh, is. Might as for well sure. be, yeah. yeah, Paul, what, is, what does Slave Willie look like? Well, he's got these sort of what we would describe today as emoji faces, where depending on uh, what is going on, he has just a different emoji face sort of over like a tin bucket head and he's just like this bucket of bolts robot if something you know kind of weird is happening he's got a wow face uh if he's angry about something he's got a real mean face that sort of thing now don't forget yeah. if we're at a pirate scene he's got an eye patch yeah he does <laughs> yeah yeah if he's supposed to be like a butler he's got a mustache I don't want to undersell the extent to which he kicks the shit out of the science project. Okay, yeah, go, go, yeah. It's like 20 minutes. He annihilates <laughs> so the whole fair. See, at one point, one of the judges, the science fair judges, is this old woman, and she's in there voting, testing out Lance's voting booth for science, and Willie picks it up and just throws it out into the hallway, and, and that's what makes Lance lose, because the woman pulled the handle to vote, and she and that happened, so she said Lance loses the science fair. I kind of like, I kind of like got up to get a drink or something and like make a snack or something, I came back and I'm like, is this still happening? <laughs> it was. Oh, and it just kept getting better and better. The oh, more my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, so this brings us to present day. Those are all our flashbacks. Now we're starting at the beginning of the movie where, where we just instantly jump into Dr. Otto's lair, which... It, uh, what is it? It's like a Mad Max hole in the ground. Yeah, but it's got like screens everywhere and different colored lights everywhere, and this is like industrial '80s techno music playing all the time. <laughs> oh, don't, mm -hmm. and don't forget the three post-apocalyptic chicks that are yeah, doing there's, his yeah, bidding. There's there's women that got told they had to put clothes on, but only from Home Depot. <laughs> like it's just 
It's yeah, one insane. has like a, a furnace conduit over her boob running to somewhere. Yeah. We don't know where. Probably her butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most obvious place. I thought it was funny. Uh, so so we, we show up there and we just, this movie starts and he just shoots the gloom beam at, at Ohio. Yeah. Um, well, specifically. The financial capital of Southern Ohio. They, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and don't forget where the gloom beam comes from. Where does it come from? <laughs> it's on top of Dr. Otto's lair. Is yeah, where is his lair? Yeah, where is yeah. this oh, fucking man. lair? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> the geography of this movie is... There is none. Yeah, it's You see an exterior of his lair, and it looks... It's supposed to look like a, a creepy bad guy mountain that you, his, his lair is inside of. But also, supposedly, it's subterranean. Like, even that is inside... I think of the earth. I don't know. I know that not all of this makes sense, but if I understood the film correctly, the gloom beam is essentially sort of like a magnetic beam that shoots out to disrupt credit card systems, but for some reason also explodes piggy banks. Yeah, it, it's supposed to break all money or something. Like it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's yeah. it's basically a statement. I'm serious about this. It's you know the mid '80s. What would happen if if the credit card system was disrupted? Because I think credit cards were getting popular. Sure. And Dr. Otto comes in and just with the gloom beam disrupts the entire system. So it's sort of a uh, cautionary tale, if you will. See, I, I thought it was more uh, that Dr. Otto was trying to wipe out his student loans because getting an evil doctor degree is not cheap. Mm. That's well, you know, be. I think I think a lot of it could be tied today because I think there's also a theme of toxic masculinity that goes throughout the film as well. That I think maybe Star Wars: uh, Last Jedi kind of stole from. Okay, a bit. I don't think we were quite there yet in 1986. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, we could argue that Mr. Lance Sterling is a gross misogynist uh, idiot throughout the whole film. He um, definitely anyway. is. I don't think it's an argument. <laughs> For sure. <Yeah>. Is. <laughs> that actually was really ahead of its time, the sort of way that he was portrayed. Yeah. And and his uh, assistant, what was her name? Ruth? Doris. Jesus, Doris. Paul. Forget her name. Fuck her. Sorry, I had a Night Beast <laughs> flashback. <laughs> um, is really the hero of the movie, and oh, it's absolutely. really funny how they sort of handle the material of presenting him as your typical like beefy hero guy and she's just sort of in the background really doing all the work oh dear maybe there's another way oh well that's it Doris. leave me here to save the day and you go off to find an easier path oh boy that's typical doris so anyway so dr <laughs> shoots the gloom beam at cincinnati it fucks the whole banking system up. Everyone's freaking out. And then Dr. Otto, you know, cuts into every sort of broadcast in the world, apparently. <laughs> even arcade machines. Yeah, even the arcade machines at the, at the old Joysticks Arcade. <laughs> and uh, if you want, I can read you guys that poem. Or mm -hmm. you could just yeah. edit it in. <laughs> okay. When the money is scrambled to the very last cent, riots and hatred soon will commence. When all the world's commerce will be put in a bind from the evils that lurk where the sun never shines. It is I, Dr. Otto von Schnick, ick, ick, who has played on you this trick, ick, ick, ick. But who's Dr. Otto, you may well ponder, while all your magnetic cash is squandered? It's he who has an eye yet cannot see. It's he who served Bullybase when he was a she. It's he who gambled with the brains and a gun. It's he who had all and yet had none. And to stop this horrible, twisted trick, just exchange the pole of old St. Nick. And if that doesn't do the save the day, put another quarter in and try another day. Oh, now it makes sense. Now it makes well, sense. Well, some of it does. I don't think they did anything with that St. Nick line. They mentioned it again, but that, that was the only to... part he really did solved, it? right? Well, how, but the thing do is, do, does the riddle, I mean... Does the riddle really matter? I mean, no. no. It doesn't really no. affect anything, right? Like, well, it, they say it, really. and well, it's the title they, of the movie. They try but. to solve it. I know that they try to solve it at various points to, to try to figure out where his lair is, I thought. Yeah, it, well, they was trying to, I, I yeah, guess who kinda. he is or what he, it's, 
it's the it's the pointless catalyst. This movie doesn't care if things necessarily make sense, right? Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. well, and and also Doctor Otto really doesn't seem to be. He's one of those types of bad guys who's really not all that concerned with actually killing his arch nemesis. Like, there's <laughs> ample opportunity to do it, and it doesn't happen. <laughs> no. Oh, no. right. This poem or this riddle basically is is pointing out. It lists all the different characters that Jim Varney eventually plays. Is what it all really just does. And characters you will probably recognize from uh, his TV show. I think a lot of them, right? Another I don't movies. know. Yeah. Well, why don't we get to this then? He fu- fucking <laughs> Lance Sterling. He's. I'm assuming in Southern Ohio still, uh, and just fucking <laughs> driving off with his his uh, his sidekick or his assistant Doris, and Doctor Otto sees him and says, "Well, let's fucking stop him." But not as Doctor Otto. Yeah. No, no, no. He gets into a special machine. Does anyone remember what that thing's called? The changing coffin. <laughs> yeah, it is. The changing <laughs> coffin. Uh, this device goes way beyond your old Halloween makeup kit and actually transforms your features, transmogrifies your speech, and gives you a natty change of clothes all at the same time. And hold on to your RNA, Doctor. <laughs> Now, Mike, if you don't mind, <laughs> please do. This is sort of what I feel is going to be my main contribution to this episode. I want to bring something up real quick. Let's hear it. Did anybody look at the plot summary on IMDb? Oh no, no. This really threw me for a loop. So let me just read a little bit of it, if you don't mind. Ernest P. Worrell tries out a strange contraption he bought cheaply called the Changing Coffin. The machine turns him into his opposite, a mad scientist and supervillain bent on world do- domination called Dr. Otto. I don't remember seeing what? that in the movie. That is no. not in the movie. No. Not in the movie. What? Is there a different version, or did they somehow like retrofit this once Ernest got like more popular? That's going to be a question for uh, Mr. Cherry when we get him on the yeah. show. Holy Moses. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder. I was just I was so confused when I read that. I'm like, was I not paying attention for the first couple minutes or something? But I went back and watched it. That was not in the movie. Wait, and it can't be that way. They have those flashbacks. We, we learned about Dr. Yeah. Otto being born. There's no way that's what that is. Unless huh. it really is a Fight Club situation and Ernest P. Worrell doesn't remember being <laughs> Dr. Otto during the science fair. Oh, God. Could be. So, so it changes into someone else. And then uh, some sort of trap thing or something stops Lance's and Doris's car. Some sort of trap oh thing that includes boulders, giant axes. <laughs> Spikes. Yeah, giant axes that <laughs> slam into the car. Yeah, about 12 things happen to this car as a single trap. It's like, Indi- like Indiana Jones temple traps all converge on this thing. All yeah, all, all of them together. All of them together. And do you remember what he says when he gets out of the car to look at it? <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> He's like, oh, we can't drive on these tires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically the rest of the movie from his point of view, from our dumb hero's point of view, is I got to get a phone to get my car towed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, didn't need, done. they didn't need the riddle. All they need to go from place to place is he's looking for a phone. Yeah, that's, the, <laughs> that's most of the rest of the movie is from his perspective <laughs> is looking for a fucking phone. Um <laughs> So while he's doing that, he runs into the first of the many characters of Dr. Otto. Who wants this one? Oh, God. Okay, I'll take this one. This is my yeah. favorite. So Lance Sterling and Doris stumble upon it. They're walking through the woods, and they stumble upon Rudd Hardtack's daycare mercenary camp. <laughs> <laughs> This is the part that really started selling me on the movie. Those youngsters look like they're having themselves the time of their lives. Physical training, especially when started young, means so much to a healthy, well-balanced life. Chris, then, is this like a camp for mercenaries and they can drop their kids off? No, no, no. This is where kids... Go when their parents are at work. They're dropped off at daycare, and they learn the uh, huge variety of mercenary skills. <laughs> it's amazing. There's just child soldiers everywhere. It's, yeah, it's a child soldier training camp. 
and it's amazing. <laughs> but there, it's all like a bunch of like eight year olds with semi automatic weapons. Yeah, yeah. it's guerrilla. It's guerrilla mercenary. Like it's mercenary, not yeah, I'm not military mercenary. Yeah. They want money for their acts. And, and describe uh, describe hardtack. For yes, us. please. Well, hardtack. I think I, I think I saw him in one of uh, Jim Varney's other shows or movies or something. But he's like this Australian sort of mercenary character wears like green fatigues and he's got that stereotypical Australian bush hat. He's got an Australian accent. But my favorite part about him <laughs> is that sometimes he has trouble finding a word. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and yeah. That word is usually ruddy. My triple A is you expired. You won't be using your ready pretty letter code words to your ready call me comrades in the bush, what? I would even argue, I don't think he has trouble finding the word. I just think he requires her to say it. Because he doesn't <laughs> yeah. really pause. He's not like fishing. He just pauses. She says ruddy or guest or commie, and then he continues on with the sentence. <laughs> like He never repeats what she says. She just says it, and he continues. And you know what's funny about this is that there's really no, like effort to capture Lance and Doris, they walk no. in, look to this camp, looking for the phone. <laughs> I didn't and understand they at all. <laughs> I didn't understand that because it's clearly Dr. Otto as a different character. Yeah. And he went there to capture them and then they, they just fuck around with them. It's well, no. They do play Russian roulette. This, yes, this is This is one of the parts where they could have easily killed Lance and Doris and they just oh, yeah. didn't. Because they have to play yeah, Russian roulette. They put roulette. him in a cage. They had him captured. Yeah, yeah, it's done. And and so Lance wants to go first <laughs> for some reason. And so, yeah. <laughs> but he does pull a, a pull a kind of a trick. Like he he grabs the robot and he fires five rounds at the robot's head, and it's all empty. It's a real deer hunter sort of situation. It, it is. Everybody's like within three feet of each other. And everyone yeah, just small starts tents. waving their guns and shooting these these semi-automatic <laughs> weapons, and somehow Lance and Taurus just run away. So Lance and Doris continue on looking for a phone so they can call AAA in the woods and, <laughs> and <laughs> point that out. They're in the woods. Yeah, Doctor Otto gets back to his lair. Then three gets into his cost a, a new costume to try to trick them and capture them again. Who wants this one? So the one with the dump. <laughs> the dump. <laughs> I'll do it. You guys can do the others. This is where this is amazing. <laughs> Lance and Doris are <laughs> they're in the forest again, and they find that there's this group of pirates. Well, well now it's nighttime too, right? Oh yeah, it, it has become night. So they've been walking. So they've been for walking a long to time. the forest for a while. And uh, this is this is Jack O'Cockney, laughing Jack O'Cockney, or something like that. And he's a pirate, and he's got the voice, and he's got an eye patch, and he's real dirty, he's got a beard, and he's got a, he's got a bunch of pirates around him. Yeah. You'll not be interrupting me chances of catching the dump now, would you, Jim? The, the dump? Ah, he the dump, Jim. The dump. So I don't. Uh, that, I think the the bit is that they want. To make a swamp monster capture, kill it. Uh, hold on, I'm now having a brain aneurysm <laughs> trying to f describe this scenario. Jack, laughing Jack O'Cockney wants to trick the <laughs> Lance and Doris. Yeah, there's no point in doing this. We're no. not going to be able to do this. No. Okay, <laughs> just the dump. There's a monster called the Dump, and every time they say his name, there's a fart noise on screen. <laughs> and it's really funny, and it shouldn't be, but it is. So they, that, so they, so they convince him. They, God, I can't do it. Someone else do it. I know it's impossible. It's just I can't do they're it. trying to draw the dump out. So the yeah. isn't it just they're trying to draw the dump out so the dump kills Doris and Lance? Isn't that the yeah, basic that's idea? The I think that's what they're doing. But if Lance and Doris beat the dump, they get a refrigerator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, come back to that. Paul, what are you going to say? I don't understand how... <laughs> okay, Dr. Otto gets into the changing coffin and becomes, like, becomes these new characters. So how are there all these, like, kids with guns already there... And then pirates are like all these other characters. Oh, God. Well, like, where do they come from? And where does the dump come from? <laughs> well, well, we find out. Well, 
<laughs> it, does, it just doesn't make any sense. Okay, so so they end up tying up uh, Lance and, the, and Doris, but as they're telling him what they're going to do, a weird segment happens for about five seconds. What is it, Hudson? Oh, so, say if they can beat the dump, then they'll win this fabulous side-by-side refrigerator-freezer combination. <laughs> it's all it's done like in... a game show. It cuts to a stage in the, in the swamp. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's, it's out of nowhere. It's five seconds and it's gone. <laughs> and what would we have for him, Johnny? It's a cabana side-by-side freezer! <laughs> This cabana holds up to 40 pounds of fruits and vegetables and has a convenient ice maker and water tap. All from cabana if you help Laughing Jack catch the dump. Back to you, Jack. This creepy, scary monster shows up with these red glowing eyes and you find it looks like he's made of trash and stuff. It's real gross. And then it turns out that Lance knows him. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're old friends. Alex? Is that you, Alex? Rudy. Well, I, I go by Lance now. Rudy, long time no see. <laughs> like, he's literally just this giant, like, garbage dump of stuff. Like, trash bags and fucking food and shit attached to him. He's just a monster. But he's like the nicest guy. He's a sweetheart. <laughs> and, and and after it's so he so they good. find out they know each other. They on he's unties them. And, and the dump gets the fridge in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> you see him just carrying it off. And I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but for all the characters that Jim Varney played, he also played the dump. No, yeah. he did fucking well, not. He, yes. did, he didn't play he didn't yes. play the physical dump. I saw I think the credits, the guy who played the hand, I think he played the actual dump monster. But Jim Barney did the did voice. The voice. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's amazing. Not it's, Jesus Christ, that's amazing. <laughs> so this is where we cut back to civilization, and the world economy is like on the brink of collapse. Everything Doctor Otto was trying to do, hundred percent successful. Oh, oh, yeah. His plan is amazingly <laughs> successful. Are we still in Southern Ohio for this? I assume I, yes. Well, I until don't they know. reach the teleportation shroud, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, there's not a lot of, like, step-by-step -step information given on, like, where they're supposed to be going. Okay, so Lance and Doris are walking through the woods, and some signs suddenly pop up. Yes. <laughs> what do they I'll, say? Can I take this part, Mike? <laughs> no, that's what I'm, I'm setting you up. That was me setting you up. What do those signs say, <laughs> boy? You. Oh, it's, so they're walking through the woods, and literally these signs just start popping up, and it says stuff like, would you like some sweet repose? <laughs> but this, these signs that pop up, which Doris is questioning, but no one else seems to, um, leads us to my favorite character, uh, Auntie Nelda, which is, <laughs> oh, <for laughs> which, sure. is another, yeah, which is another, another Jim Varney classic where he, it's just like a, a large woman, like a large older woman with a neck brace. And one of the first times we see her, she walks out of this house, which is like supposed to be like a bed and breakfast, I think. And she dumps a giant bucket of water on this one flower. And she says, like, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, you're lucky to get it. Flowers in China don't even get water. <laughs> so great. And so, like, she meets these characters, the characters, and they go in the house. And it's like, it is disgusting. There are tarantulas yeah. <laughs> everywhere. There's dirty dishes and garbage and like lizards. And the robot Willie is is cooking, but <laughs> he's making dinner. But he's not doing it fast <laughs> enough. So Auntie Nelda puts his hand in the blender. Now all of a sudden I've got a Julia child to deal with. But, but, but doctor, I I oh 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 I'm not microphone, doctor. Oh, 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 oh. The dinner has eyeballs in it, <laughs> and I don't know why. I I found this funny while while Auntie Nelda is like talking about the dinner and stuff. She uses the ladle to just smash like a mouse or something off screen. Like, dude, I I loved Auntie Nelda, all of it. Well, um, I think she's. I think it's important to point out that she's a little salty, perhaps oh. partially because of her dead son. Oh yeah, that's oh, that is yes. true. <laughs> <laughs> and so the trick here is that <laughs> wait is the son what was cooked into the meal 
I don't think so. I don't think but so. there was eyeballs in it. What, what if that was the sun? <laughs> oh, God. I didn't think about that. <laughs> I didn't either yeah, until now. Um, the idea here is that she is going to poison the wine so that she, they can capture everybody. So Tina and Lance have no problem toasting. Like, it would be the rude thing to do to not have a toast. Doris doesn't want to do it. And they just all get really close and stare at her. <laughs> and, and Doris is like, okay, sh- I have a bad feeling about this. And then drinks. They all drink. And they all pass out, right? Well, except Tina, because Tina's in on it, obviously. <laughs> Auntie Nelda trashes the robot's, like, speed and service, but does admit that the bouillabaisse was <laughs> delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, Willie, for all your obvious incompetence, the bouillabaisse was excellent. And the wine was a knockout. Gee, thanks, Doc. Like, Sterling and Doris wake up in Dr. Otto's hideout at this point. Or no, not in his hideout, right? Is it just the basement of the house? It's the then? basement. It's the basement of Auntie Nelda's, which kind of looks like Dr. Rado's lab. <laughs> Sterling and Doris are tied up to a bed, and Tina comes over, and she's like, I'm sorry. And they try to convince her to help, but she's never done anything good in her whole life, so she doesn't know if she can. <laughs> like, we, this is also where we they just kind of jump into the fact that apparently they're going to turn Lance and uh, and Doris into zombies to be part of a zombie army. Oh, yeah. No, wasn't, were they going to feed them to the zombie army, or were they going to become part of it? They're going to become part of it. I don't think it really probably matters. Probably both. Yeah, yeah, but in the end, it probably, yeah. So, so that was kind of this bit. So then... Uh, Tina does seem to find something she could do in Hudson. What does Tina oh, do? Yeah. She finds the teleportation shroud. Transporter shroud. Doris, does this make any sense to you? Anything makes more sense than becoming part of an army of zombies. She doesn't even untie uh, Lance or Doris. She just puts this blanket over them and they disappear and they show up in like somewhere else in a parking yeah, garage Paul, somewhere. where Paul, where do they wake up? They wake up in a warehouse. Yes. But it's not quite empty. No, there's someone else there. <laughs> someone by the name of Guy Dandy. Yeah, I've got a lot of money. More wealth than you can possibly imagine. But I like to think I'm the same unspoiled Guy Dandy I was before I inherited every dime. <laughs> Guy Dandy's just this rich fucking dude in a tux, right? Like, <laughs> uh, oh, but it turns out I think Guy Dandy. So early, well, we we missed, we didn't talk about this, but Lance actually lost an election running for Senate. Oh well, yeah, that's barely mentioned. Turns yeah. out Guy Dandy is the one who beat. It's so, the Senate seat. it's so confusing. Uh, it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> He's exactly. So if if there's someone named Guy Dandy, this is exactly what you would picture a Guy Dandy to look like. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. He he inherited all his money, and he knows other rich people because he gave them all their money. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, so Lance and Doris like walk into another part of the warehouse where there's inexplicably a couch that guy Dandy's sitting on with a woman and uh, drinking tea or something, and the robot's coming to get him. And Guy Dandy has a fucking laser cane, and yeah, it's pretty it's, sweet. It's amazing. Guy ends up trapping Doris and Lance in this like warehouse elevator, and then just like closing the door and then letting it drop, and they just like drop forever. But, like, wait, okay, so this is where the geography gets real, real weird. <laughs> yeah, Because, <laughs> like, somehow, I think the elevator falls through, a f- like, the floor yeah. of the building, and the elevator opens, and they're in Otto's lab in, like, the his crazy <laughs> mad scientist mountain. So this, the, for me, this is the moment when the movie completely goes off the rails. It just becomes a mess, right? And, Paul, I think you were confused because... All of Jim Varney's characters are now in the same scene. At the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the no. same time. It's all the characters. In terms of the plot, I'm just like, what is happening <laughs> yeah. right now? This makes zero sense. Well, well Doris and Willie pair off. Like, yes, they go okay. off and fight. 
So that, and they, which is amazing for a for a, a beautiful. That's my maybe my favorite joke in the movie. And 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 Doris <laughs> this whole time we haven't talked about what she's dressed as, but she's dressed in just I don't know, normal clothes, like whatever, just normal eighties clothes. She and has short we, hair. We yeah we at some point cut to her. After she's beaten Willie, she announces she's beaten him, and she is a giant barbarian woman at this point, and it is amazing. Okay. Thank you. I, I had to rewind it. Yeah, I had to watch that a couple times. I'm like, what? And then she's later, after that, it's one shot, and then after yeah. that shot, she's back to her normal, Back like, to her normal so, thing! Like, and she comes out as the warrior woman holding Willie's severed head. In other shots, Willie has his head back. That's not the end of Willie. At some point, you just got to roll with it. <laughs> yeah, I That's mean... That's this entire movie for me. I just rolled with the whole thing. Yeah. If, you, if you're not on board by this point, you're never going to be on board. How does that fight even end? I don't... Well, Lance loses, effectively, right? He runs yeah, away. Yeah, like, Nel Aunt Nelda, like, hits yeah. him, right? Yeah, or Aunt Nelda finally hits him. Uh, Otto gets away. Doris tries smashing a button that says abort a bunch of times. It and comes so, down to a choice of two buttons. Yes. yes. Oh God. I I was in. I was God so tense during this scene. Okay. The call comes down to this. Lance is standing in, in front of a console with two buttons to push. Which one should he push? Should he push the right button or the wrong button? That's what they're labeled as: the right button or the wrong button. <laughs> the right button is green. The wrong button is a glowing red. Before you say what happens, Hudson, can we all just? Admit which one they thought was the right button. The correct button. The right button. The right button is the right one. No, my brain was like, the wrong button's the right button. Because the whole movie, Dr. Otto was like, he loved things being bad. We didn't kind of comment on it, but he keeps commenting on how like how deliciously unclean something is. Or, well, that's the thing. You had to look at these two buttons from the point of view of Dr. Otto. That's my thought. And I yeah. was like, dude, I was like, dude. My, I was so tense. I'm like, dude, Lance, <laughs> press the wrong button. That's the right button. Not the right button. That's the wrong button. Well, he took his sweet ass time thinking about which one to push. <laughs> well, he had to have the inner monologue and he had to see his parents before he could make a decision. But I mean, honestly, any of us, when, when, when faced with the question, well, should we push the right button or the wrong button? Come on. 80% of us are going to push the right button after Possibly. a long internal monologue. But after we're gonna the push internal the right monologue, button. yeah. Yeah. But but what did he push? He pushed the right button. But that was the wrong button. Well, no, it was labeled the right button, so he pushed the right button. It was the wrong button in this context. Yes, it was. But it was the right button. So you were right, Mike? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I knew it. I, I literally, like, I think I verbally to the screen said, I told you. <laughs> like, <laughs> because everything blows up. <laughs> yes. The whole island explodes. And Lan everything starts to explode, and Lance goes, whoopsie. <laughs> <laughs> And then the movie ends, right? No. No. Oh, no. What happens next? There's, there's one Jim Varney character we haven't seen yet. Oh. Well, somehow, they all get out of the explosion, <laughs> and they're okay. So Lance and Doris. And Tina. And Tina, Tina's yeah. on their team now. Yeah, she, they get back, they get back to their car. And it's out of gas. How do they get back to the car? I guess it's fixed now. It's just they got back Wait, to I it. I didn't even think about that. How is it fixed? <laughs> yeah. After like giant axes fell on it and boulders and <laughs> Lance is steering it and Tina and Doris are pushing they, yeah. it. Yeah. They've been they've been to twelve gas stations before this and none of them have had gas, which I believe is proof that the apocalypse is officially happening. Yeah. Like <laughs> Dr. Otto won. Well, it they happened. didn't stop. They didn't stop the gloom beam, really. I mean, no, no, they lost. He hit the wrong button. The gloom beam was wildly successful. Nothing got solved. The riddle didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> pretty dark. Yeah, it's pretty dark when it's you great. think about it. Yeah, but, it is. But they push up to this gas station, and who comes out? Ernest, baby. Ernest is there. Ernest P. Worrell. Oh my he god. He is and the he, uh, attendant. He's the, he's like the attendant mechanic guy. Yeah. Apparently that I so like we talked about this at the top of the show. Apparently that was his, was his first appearance, appearance in a movie. Yeah. But there's a musical cue that is very sort of like, <laughs> "Hey, you know this guy." Yeah. Yeah, what well, I forget how that sounds. Put that in here, Polly. Bye-bye, y'all. Have a nice day. <laughs> know what I mean? 
and he looks at look directly at the camera, directly at the camera when he says that. <laughs> yeah, there's no gas, right? There hasn't been any. Yeah. Um, so yeah. the girls have to push the car and as Lance steers and sings. Lance is a piece <laughs> of shit. <laughs> uh, but but that's of course that that insinuates. I mean, we know Ernest as his own character, but this insinuates that Doctor Otto is earnest. Yeah, exactly. It that's, does. that's what I want to talk the rest of the the last half of this podcast. Let's talk about how fucking earnest is Dr. Otto in the rest of these movies. Because well, let's talk about what happens here, Mike. What happens? Well, we we know Dr. Otto to escape got into the changing coffin. That's what the abort thing that Doris was hitting the whole time. So when it exploded, he was in the changing coffin, maybe thus destroying the changing coffin and making him always be whatever character he became. Ernest P. Worrell in this case. Oh. But Mike, what's well. the evidence within the movie? Oh, I forget. What is it? Ernest takes his hat off and the hand of Dr. Otto is on his head. Oh, <laughs> oh is it? Oh, it is! Yeah. yeah. That's right. And that's why or you never see Ernest take a hat off in any of the that's other it. movies. His hat is always on his head. He never I, takes it off. I will never watch Ernest Scared Stupid the same way again. Yeah, we've got to we've got to watch all the Ernest movies yeah. to check. This movie ruined my childhood. <laughs> this is it. No, or made it better, Paul. Yeah, Th true. This movie improved my childhood. <laughs> Rating time! What are we rating this in? Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it and know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> know what it means? I know. Granted, that was only said once in this movie, but fuck it. Like It's earnest. <laughs> Classic. Uh, Chris Hudson, you're on the left of my computer screen, so you're going first. Oh, my God. How, All right. How would you rate this movie? One out of 100. Know what it means? Right. Well, I, I have to say that I don't remember what my highest rated movie was for season one. But this is probably my favorite movie that we've covered. Wow. So, yeah, this was really, really good. It was so weird, and it was bizarre seeing all these, all these like, Jim Varney characters that I knew from other things, just seeing them in this really dark context. Yeah. <laughs> it, just, it was so weird, <laughs> and it was so good. And, uh, like, er, nothing about this movie made sense, but it completely worked for me. So I'm, I'm going to give it 90, know what it means? <laughs> Nice. Oh, this is good. All right, Jason Holes, what are you going? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is probably one of the, if not the most enjoyable movie I think we've reviewed on this podcast. It touched on a little nostalgia, like Chris said. It is completely bonkers from the very, very beginning. It's just nuts the entire way through and enjoyable the entire time. Th this podcast exists to find movies like this. <laughs> so, yeah. if, you know, you're going to look at it and you're ever going to give a high score, this would be the one. I'm going 100. 100. Wow! 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 wow. 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 Holy shit! Yep. <coughs> I mean, oh, if not this movie, wow. what movie? <laughs> yeah. Good point. Wow. wow. Holy fuck. Paul... Follow it up. Well, I'm going to sound like an asshole now. <laughs> um, no, look, I mean, I, I grew up with Ernest, uh, you know, huge, huge fan when I was when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Um, and so this was great getting a chance to watch this because I hadn't seen it before. I didn't even know it, it existed somehow, Mike, before you brought it up. So I thank you for that. I, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to be a little bit more critical just because um, I, I struggled just a little bit sort of during that second act to keep it going. But overall, tons of fun characters. So funny. So good. I'm going to go 77. Wow. Uh, yeah, but... You know what I mean. So, Paul, I totally understand what you're saying about it kind of dipping down at some point because of the formula. And I think each on their own held up very well. But right. the fact that it was a little repetitive in terms of the formula, you lose a little bit of attention maybe. But as, as we all know, I like to factor in what I think, especially someone for the first time seeing this movie and not ever having ever witnessed the pure insanity that this thing is. <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay in, in the middle a little bit here with Hudson. And I'm going to go, uh, I think it got released... On VHS in 92, so I'm going to go 92, know what it means? Very nice. Very nice. 
Nice. Well, congratulations, Jim Varney. You, you're not with us anymore, but you have the highest rated score on B-Movie Mania. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it, I bet you, I mean, this will last all season. This is the new one to beat, I guess. Yeah, but, probably. You know what? I think we just shouldn't even bother and just pick the shittiest movies we can find from here for the rest of the season. <laughs> oh, trust me. I have plans for that. Yeah. <laughs> on the next episode of B-Movie Mania, I want all of you to her up and give granny a kiss we're gonna watch the 1988 trauma film rabbit grannies oh, God. <laughs> you can what? find it on amazon or youtube oh. and uh when given a demonic present by their black sheep nephew two kindly old grannies are transformed into demons who proceed to gorily knock off their greedy relatives <laughs> oh, God. Uncle Lloydy in the house. Yeah, yeah, baby. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves. And they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Season two, I man, we kicked it off with a banger. I, wow. you know, not tooting my horn. I just mean, you know, that's a good one. I think this is this has been a real fun talking about it and watching it. And if you liked it, uh, you know, like we've mentioned in the teaser, you can watch it on Amazon or uh, YouTube. And if you like the podcast, you know, make sure you're subscribed and you can rate and review on iTunes and all that other shit out there. Uh, and you can buy some shirts from us. Yeah, we got a, st- a store, Envy store. It's on, on our uh, link on our webpage, bmoviemania.com. There's a link there. You can go to Store Envy and search Bmovie Mania. We got it. And uh, fucking let's do this, guys. Let's all just everyone do this. Does that make sense? <laughs> no? What does that mean? I don't know, but let's do it. What are we doing? Whatever it is. Let's just all do it. I don't know what it is, but Mike is now my favorite B-movie maniac. Yeah, baby! Mike, I think I know what you mean. Know what I mean? <laughs> know what I mean? Know what I mean? Then you don't infect me, knowing I'll infect you, knowing nothing can make us immune, and our love festers like an open room.